Hi, my name is Andy Burgess. I'm a product specialist for Aston Martin and you find me here today at the uh, UK headquarters of Aston Martin in Warwickshire. What I'd like to do is take you through this beautiful DB11. This is, particular one is a V12, but you can also uh, have this car in a V8 option as well. The V12, as we see here at the moment, produces 600 horsepower and 700 newton meters of torque. The V8 is 503 horsepower and 675 newton meters of torque. But fundamentally, they look exactly the same. Apart from the V12 has four vents on its bonnet and the V8 has two. So let's talk about some of the design. So when you look at a Aston Martin, it should always look like it's been formed from one mass block of material. And what we mean by that is we don't want to see ugly shut lines across the car. So to achieve this, we have what we call a one piece aluminium bonnet. This is made from one piece of aluminium, one of the largest clamshell aluminium bonnets in the world. Very difficult to engineer, as you can imagine. On the front of that bonnet, we have our traditional Aston Martin badge. This is made by one of our partners, Vaunton's, in one of the oldest jewellery companies in the Birmingham Jewellery Quarter, over 200 years old. It's metal, it's silvered, enamelled. The white section here is glass. This is the final thing that you'll ever see put onto an Aston Martin after it's built. It has to go through stringent uh, quality control, and once it's passed that, then we place the badge in its formed place. The grille as well dates back to our 1950s with the DB4 and DB5, a five vane grille, very traditional looking at the front there. And as we walk around the side of the car, we can look at the proportions. So Marek Reichman and his team have a philosophy that we use the one third, two third golden proportion rule, meaning the glass area is one third and the body is two third. We also put lines not just there for design sake, they always have a, a consequence and a purpose. So you'll see this shoulder line going right the way through to the back, to the rear haunches. This gives you an impression of a muscular uh, physique, like an athlete, and also flared at the rear, giving you the impression that's where the power is, because obviously this is rear wheel drive. We also have another hark back to history as well with the side strake. This you'll see on DB4 and DB5. But on this particular car, it acts as an aero de device. What we mean by that is it's extracting air from that front wheel arch that builds up at speed. This is stopping front end lift. We call it the curlicue. We call it that because if you place your hand underneath it and just run along it, you can feel like a rib section. And what that's doing is curling the air as it comes out and extracted, brings it nice and close to the car, and then puts it into what we call the C duct at the rear here. It compresses the air, brings it into this section here, what we call the Aston Martin Aeroblade. And this extracts air, creating an invisible spoiler. So when air comes over the top of the vehicle, it hits this blade of air, gets flicked over, and allows the air at the rear to extract, again, creating downforce. Open up the door as well. It gives you a little bit of a handshake as you open it, and it will raise 12 degrees. That 12 degrees, is making sure that we don't hit a curb, because obviously being a sports car, it's a little bit lower than a normal car. Also, it has a hydraulic ram within the door, which allows you to put this door wherever you like, and it will stay there. But because of the 12 degrees, this then allows the door to shut under its own weight. So an Aston Martin is not all about its looks, it's also about how the car drives. All Aston Martins have a bonded aluminium chassis, and it's the bonding which is the important section. We take that technology from the aerospace industry and it's the bonding that gives the car rigidity. In other words, this does not flex under load. The result to a customer is when you drive this car, it gives you a real planted feel. It lets the suspension do the work rather than the chassis doing the work. Coupled with that, we have almost a 50-50 weight distribution with this car. We achieve that by putting the gearbox into the rear we join it with an aluminium torque tube, and within that there's a carbon fibre prop shaft to the engine. This allows the engine to be further back. Again, when you're turning into a corner, you don't want weight over the front of the vehicle. So bringing the engine back is a beneficial aspect of that. So if we move to the rear of the car now, we'll talk about some of the design features on the rear of this DB11. You'll really see the rear haunches now, really exaggerated across the rear end. And obviously these lights as well, you'll notice the design of them. If you actually place those two lights together, it actually forms the same shape as the badge. 
And then you'll notice again, we have another Vaunton's badge fitted to the rear of the vehicle. Very, very large boot inside as well, 270 cubic litres of uh, boot space. And there's three ways of opening the boot. You can use the button inside the car, you can use the key, and you've also got gesture control as well. Another nice thing to look at as well when you've got the boot open is to get on your knees and look through the sea duct as well. If you remember, I spoke about the aerodynamic feature earlier on, the sea duct. If you look through, then you can really see what I was talking about earlier on. So another nice feature of this boot as well is soft close. So if you place the boot in its position, it just brings the boot down nicely there. So that concludes our exterior walk around of this beautiful DB11. If you'd like to go on to astonmartin.com, you can actually personalise and configure your own Aston Martin yourself. But if you don't want to do that, you can go to your local dealer. We'll be happy to run through their own configuration with you.